My name is Nelson Burton Jr. and I'm from New Orleans East. New Orleans East. So how was it growing up in New Orleans East? Did you grow up with a two-parent household? Uh, your family members, how was that experience? I grew up with a two-parent household. Um, I grew up with my older sister Ashley, who's my business partner right now. And um, growing up in the East, it was, you know, difficult in the morning to get past the um, <laughs> the high rise. But other than that, like everything was good. I used to go to school uptown. They used to call me an East Beast. And you know, I never was from the Seventh Ward or the, the Magnolia, but I was from, you know, New Orleans East. All right, man. So growing up in a two-parent two parent household, what is the pros, um, the pros of that? You know, a lot of people don't even have that uh, that privilege to, 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 to live and be, grow up in a household like that. So how was that for you and, and what is the, the best things about growing up in, in that type of family dynamic? Um, growing up in a two-parent household was, you know, very, the pro of it is you get to grow up with both of your parents and, you know, you definitely want that when you get older. That's a goal to have a two-parent household, not to really, you know, have any you know, one parent, like you want two people in your child life. Everyone need a mother, a queen, and everyone need a king, so. So what, you talk about your school, what school did you go to and how was that experience? Um, from, I mean, just your school experience from elementary to high school to college, how was that for you? Just school in general, what take us from beginning to end? Yeah, so me and my sister just was talking about that this morning, um, how Hurricane Katrina affected um, some of us, like when we had to move, I, I moved when I was 10 years old to Houston and um, I was going to Gene Garden at the time. That's like in Gentilly, like close to Lakeview. And, you know, coming back to New Orleans and it wasn't even open and we had to, you know, scramble and go to other schools. Like I went to St. Mary's, that's formerly known as an all girls school. So I went to St. Mary's for a year and then I went to St. All, seventh grade, all the way to 12th. So, um, that was a challenging experience um, during Hurricane Katrina, but um, once I got to St. Oh, man, it was like, honestly, I didn't want to be there at first, you know, because going to school with all boys was different, but, um, you know, it definitely taught me so much um, life skills, and um, I learned a lot, and I'm connected to a huge network of other people that went through the same hallways as I did. So you, you don't regret going through that process at all? So. Not at all. I feel like if you're a great father, a mother, single father, single mother, a great parent household, you should send your black young son to St. Augustine High School. Like, it teaches you how to navigate through the world being a black young man. That's why I sit right here in front of you in a suit. I can sit in front of multiple people. I get indoors that I never would have thought of because of what St. All taught me. And they ain't teaching you nothing education-wise. They just taught me how to move through life being being a black young man, so. Awesome, awesome. Um, so tell us what, what you do um, and, and how did you get into your profession? So I own a black car service, um, a limousine and shuttle service. Um, New Orleans has been great to me throughout the last five years. I started from the bottom though. Me and my sister, we started a medical transportation company together um, after our mom passed in 2017 me and my sister 2018 we started a medical transportation company that's why I tell people when you start a business it's not gonna always look how you want it to look the first day we started a medical transportation company and our dad works at the airport and he like the vehicle wasn't moving much and we had like a 10 passenger silver van and my dad was like, you guys should um, start doing um, work from the airport. So my sister then put us on a trip advisor and we started getting leads from, you know, tourists. Um, and we, we, we were charging the cheapest. We started charging like $10 a person in a, in a, it was like a 10 passenger silver van. I still had that same van today, but I wrapped it black. But we was doing medical transportation and airport. So we was a, uh, airport and medical transportation company. And I'm like, uh, I read a lot of- $10 per head? $10 per head. That's why I started from, 
I used to sleep in the vehicle like overnight to pick up early morning rides. It was just me and my dad. We was the two only drivers at first. So we used to, um, you know, he, he, have, he still had a full-time job. So it was just, my sister used to answer the phones. I used to um, drive most of the time. And yeah, like Essence, I remember the first Essence we did, man, like we used to take all cash. My pocket, I had so much cash in my pocket. But it was like, it was crazy to see how far we come. For real, I got some pictures. It's like, it, it, it's, it looked crazy. Like, so uh, how, old were you, how old were you when that started? So I was 22 and my sister was 28. So I was um, young, I just was coming out of a stage where I just was telling my friend earlier, <clears throat> when like, in between like 18 and 21, it's like, you as a young man you look for people to follow and i followed a lot of people Mentors. you know i follow a lot of the wrong people right. honestly i thought that these guys had money you know what i'm saying it was fresh they had women they had cars you know they even had nice cribs but it was like so it's like you follow these people and then what you know so like i had just got out of that stage where it was like you know, I'm not following nobody. I'm about to find myself. So I began to just work on myself, reading books, talking to the right people, just trying to do everything right. And it, it was hard. It was so hard because not a lot of people are doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when, you know, you take that initiative to be like, you know, man, I'm about to get it out the mud. It was hard, but now it's like it's been five years. So it's like things are like opening up. I'm seeing pathways that I wanted to get to, but it's like now I'm there. Like you know, so it's like. So when you say now I'm there, what what does what does that mean um, to you saying I'm there? Um, I would say I'm there because um, this past this past um, year we completed the essence contract. Um, any black provider in New Orleans knows how big that is to acquire the entire contract um it was you know something that i seen that was going to happen 10 years down the line you know it was something that i never thought that i would be in a conversation of um so quickly um but me and my sister doing COVID, and a lot of these industries technology is getting in a lot of these industries and making it in younger people favor so we just was in an old industry that we're young, like, you know, we grew up on MySpace, Facebook, Google. Like, you grew up on all those things. So it's like, iPhones. iPhones. It's like, you know, so it's like, these, my competitors are old. They have all of the contracts. They have contracts with the New Orleans Saints. They have contracts with Tulane, Pelicans, all the big name people, but Essence Fest. I love Essence Fest because they find professional, black entrepreneurs and they give you a chance and they gave us a chance and we killed it we killed it nice nice so tell us um you know about this like i don't think a lot of people know what goes into a service that you provide right so give us some insight on what it takes to be successful because I, I mean you got that chance like you said from that so you think that's gonna happen you know like in forever, right? So give us some insight on, you know, the day-to-day -day, um, on how to operate a business like this. So I always like to um, refer back to this book called The E-Myth. Um, we have our business set up in three departments. Um, we have our marketing, we have our operations, and we have our finances. So every business have that, no matter how you want to slice and dice it, you have marketing, how people find you, how your, you know, your voice, how people view your company, and who are you trying to attract, like who's your client, like marketing and sales. So we have that aspect of our business. We have like salespeople, like I give my salespeople 5% commission to sell, you know, that's, and I don't believe in, entangling job descriptions. I want you to focus on one thing and one thing only. I make everyone's job really easy. Um, and I hire, it, and this is another thing, a book is called um, Who, wait, it's called, I'm trying to think, it's called Who, Not When, it's Who. I think it's called Not When, But Who. But I hire professional people to handle the job. But, um, so that's sales. 
so operations is the service that you're providing. Um, we offer we offer champagne, we offer flowers um, that are being placed in the vehicles. Um, you can add this on to your service, and just you know how the drivers address, um, just the whole protocol, like what makes us different. Um, but we're a hospitality driven limousine company, so we believe in hospitality. We're from New Orleans, one of the best city is known for hospitality so and we have our finances um that's our bookkeeper cpa our um tax attorney um all of that stuff go and i i only really like controlling my operations i like outsourcing my marketing and i like outsourcing my finance i just like focusing on the service that we provide so <clears throat> You know, uh, we we uh, interviewed a lot of entrepreneurs and business people, and um, outsourcing has it been easy for you to do like to do that? Because sometimes outsourcing, and maybe it's different uh, by service and by business, but has that been an easy transition for you to be able to uh, outsource certain services that you need done for your business, or has that been a challenge for you? Um, I will honestly say no because my network. Um, I network with a lot of, I would like to say, A-plus people. Um, it, it's all about who you're networking with um, because we have a, a tax attorney that's in um, Dallas and we have a CPA that's in Atlanta. And then like our marketing company, I think they're New Orleans based, but we just work with so many people. Our sales, one of our salesperson, like they work in Missouri. Another one working like um, Denver. So it's like I'm gathering these people from all across the United States. I'm not just um, focusing. Yeah, like I'm, I'm in, you know, I live in Nashville. So it's like I'm getting people from all over working on like one thing. Nice, nice. So tell us about the, you know, we kind of have a, a short side conversation beforehand. Tell us about the type of clients that you you know work with day to day, and how those experiences are uh, with, with working with them. You know, not just events, but just your particular clientele that you service. So we service a high class clientele. When I say high class, it's more of business professional, corporate um, type people. Um, like we pick up Brandon Ingram, um, Lonzo Ball. Um, you know, just certain, like a lot of corporate travel. And when I say corporate, it's like, you know, obviously their company is paying for it or something like that. Um, so we do a lot of corporate people, a lot of business travel, a lot of CEOs, and um, just a lot of like companies. Like a lot of, we get booked by a lot of executive assistants. So you're saying in a four year time span, you're charging $10 a day for just regular people to now dealing with million dollar corporate clients on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes, because we over delivered. Like, um, like when I walked in this store, I was like, you know, I was wild because like this is over this is over the top. Like this is like a soldier slim painting. This is over the top. Like they have street corners. Like this is over the top. And it's like, yeah, you may not start off charging the price that you even supposed to charge what's feasible, but you will get there. Like it's a, it's a marathon. It's not always a race. It takes time. Like everything, you know. Sometimes when you want to push things and you want to go a certain way right now, it's like, man, you gotta always remember. It's like it takes time. Like, so you say you read a lot of books, <clears throat> and um, cause you, you did mention a, a few books already, but talking about that time and consistency. What is something that you remember that you've read to keep you, keep yourself on that track and knowing that this is going to be something that's going to pay off? Or did you even think that it was going to pay off? Damon Jern, The Power of Broke. The Power of Broke. Man, being not, not always, you know, having certain things push you to another level. It make you, you know, get it out the mud. And me and my sister, we just, we worked so hard. Um, we literally came from anything. Like um, we started with nothing almost, and we made something out of nothing. So it's just like um, not always being in position is a better position because I love being an underdog. 
Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love, like, people not really saying I'm going to win. Because that just, you know, you can hype people up, and they say we ain't going to win. I was rooting for Southern versus LSU, and I'm like, you know, it's like comp, but if they had to beat them, that's like the Super Bowl. That's like a championship. Right. So it's like, you know, like, I always love being an underdog. I don't want people looking at me like I'm this and I'm that. No, man. I'm, that's why I try to think bigger. And one of the great books I read also was The Magic of Thinking Big. The magic of thinking big, I think really, really big. I want to do business international one day. And, you know, hopefully I get there. But it's it's a goal, you know, if I fall short, you I mean, know. And that was my next question. Like, where do you see yourself going with all of this? Um, you know, is it other business ventures or is it just focusing strictly on what you have going on now and building it, like you said, to just an international company? So where I'm going with all of this, it's um, a question. I used to always make it like, um, yeah, like I'm going to do this and that. But honestly, man, I, I really just want to give back um, to just like my community and just give back. Like that's the best thing. I don't, I don't brag about how much money I make or about how much money I have. I brag about giving back, man. You know, um, that's something that I love to do um, is to give back. Like, I believe the person you are without money is the person that you will be with money. So if you was rude and, you know, like not a good person, you know, without money, when you get money, you're just going to be rude. And like when I like make when I'm making a transition of being a serial entrepreneur, I always keep that in mind. Like um, I'm nobody, you know, we all nobody. We living on this earth and I just treat people with respect. You never know what someone is going through. And I just, I'm just a, a great, happy person. I don't really like negativity, you know, and certain energies. I like to stay around positive energy. I always think positive, you know, so. So, um, you know, from my understanding and just from my experience, giving back really puts you in a good place mentally. Um, what made you believe in giving back? Well, it's just, Something that needs to be done. Um, I give. I try to give back every day. Where whether that's giving back knowledge, um, giving back resources, giving back money. You know, just um, tipping the bellman or like you know some of my drivers. You know, they live off tips and they have families, and it's just it's bigger than what all we see. You know, it goes deeper um, than what you see. Someone may really need a hand or that lift. I always tell people whatever I know to help them. You can ask me any question and I'll tell you. Um, so like a lot of what we do at our business, we give our, um, the people that work with us, the ability to have a voice. So um, I meet with my drivers every Monday. I meet with my whole operations team every Monday on Zoom. And I give them the option to look at our new logo and look where we're going, and I want you to see the future. And, you know, I, I include a lot of people on what we have going on because we go together. You know, we have to all go together. Thanks, thanks. Um, so I want to switch it up a, a little bit about something about New Orleans. What do you feel like makes New Orleans New Orleans? The accent, um, the creativity. New Orleans is an amazing place filled with amazing people. Like, um, I live in Nashville, people stop me all the time about just like my swag, like just how I speak, um, how I carry myself, how I think I could just come in this city and just do this and that. Like it's just because I have a, a New Orleans aura on me to where like, you know, like I'm from the city, like, you know, like, yeah, like we've been doing this, you know what I'm saying? like. Lil Wayne, Soldier Slim, all them, man, them people is known around the world. Lil Wayne, I, I watched an interview with him. He was saying before he even knew what cash money was, like it was that in New Orleans before it was that around the world. Like it was popping in New Orleans. It was like, you could pop here, you could pop anywhere. But yeah. And that's true. That's true. Um, so uh, also, you know, I want to switch this question up a little bit as well because you drive in New Orleans, but we usually ask, you know, what's uh, a New Orleans story that you can tell us that's only unique to New Orleans, but what is uh, a driving experience with a client, the most memorable that you may have had in New Orleans with one of your clients? 
Um, let me think. We. Uh, does it have like what? What? Anything? Okay. Um, so we we like service a lot of people, and um, back when I was servicing, um, we had like an airline group um, that we would pick up like every week. Um, they were like a miniature airline that we pick up like every week. They have a couple rides on the schedule. Um, one of the pilots, this was actually my dad picked up one of the pilots and the crew and um, they went in and they, they was at a hotel downtown and the guy, the pilot, he, my dad picked them up that morning also because they would come in one day and leave the next day. So like he picked them up like maybe like on Wednesday and they had to leave Thursday morning. So um, he went back and get the pilot at Thursday morning and um, the pilot never came down. So my dad went inside the hotel room and tried to see, you know, like what's going on, like where's the pilot? The crew was down, but they didn't, they couldn't get in touch with the pilot. So um, we eventually found out that the pilot was handcuffed to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know what I'm saying, like, that was like, really like new, like, you know what I'm saying, like, he was handcuffed to the bed, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's really what happened, so, like, you know, man, that was, that's just something that stuck out, I don't know, I couldn't think of nothing else, I, like, from when you that's said, story, though, like, that's kind of like, dog, like, I didn't even want to tell it, bro, I was just like, that just was in my mind, bro. Nah, that's, that's awesome, man, um, so what, what would you tell uh, the youth? Uh, what advice would you give to you um, with the with the knowledge that you know now about you know just life in general? I would say um, put God first. Um, this a couple of things that I live by. Um, I'm a man of God. I'm nothing without God. So it's like people don't like to really talk about it. And I'm not a Jehovah. I'm not a Jehovah Witness. You know, I'm Baptist, but I do. I started this business with God. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like the reason I'm standing before you talking and you know even like doing this interview is because of God. So I like to start with God, and um, after God, I would like to say, you know, who you're surrounded by um, is it plays a huge, huge effect on like what are you influenced by? It plays it plays a huge effect on who you are, and a lot of people nowadays, well, a lot of teenagers, youth, they're not really, they don't know themselves yet. So they're following somebody. No matter what they have on, they, they getting that from someone that they're looking up to. So just make sure you're following the right people and make sure you're surrounded by the right people. And also, um, third, you have to read books. Like that is really, and it's hard. When I first read my first real book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, Man, I was reading the stuff, but I wasn't comprehending it. Yeah, I wasn't comprehending it. Yeah, you gotta read it like three, four times. I'm reading it, I'm like, man, he what, what? And then I'm just going back over, I'm like, man, all right. I had to read it like three times, like, and then I'm like, I finally started to comprehend, I really got it. So when I got it, I'm like, dang, I can run with it. And I can use this, like, you know, when you're talking to people. So first off, I tell my drivers, it's on time first, appearance second, and then there's your attitude, because it's like, it's certain doors you're trying to get in. If you're not, if you late, man, I don't want to talk to me late. And I'm sorry, but if you on time, but you look, you look sloppy. Man, this dude sloppy, man, like, you know? But if you on time, you look well, now it's about what you say. Man, that nigga got killed on somewhere or Damn, like, I don't even want to talk to him. So it's like, you know, it's on time, appearance, and it's attitude. So it's like, um, what you know, play is a huge effect on where you're gonna go. And I play chess, um, I'm an advocate for chess, I'm an advocate for reading books, and you know, we're just trying to make moves. Real talk, we're trying to make moves. Another good book is Your Next Five Moves. That's another good one. Yeah. All right, well, you know, thank you for coming on Corner Store Stories, but we would like to let you have the chance to let everybody know where to find your business or even yourself on any uh, website or social media platforms. Okay, um, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, 
LinkedIn, um, Burton Transit NOLA. Um, my Instagram is Nelson Burton Jr. And um, yeah, that's it. Only in New Orleans.